Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of MedChat Monday Healthcare Specialty Series. Today we are going to learn more about the field of podiatry. Now, the field of podiatry is a branch of medicine that's devoted to the study, diagnosis, and medical and surgical treatment of disordered disorders of the foot, ankle, and lower extremity. To discuss podiatry as a field that you might want to consider, we have Dr. Ramawi, who's a practicing surgical podiatrist, to give us insight into his journey about how he became a podiatrist. So, Dr. Ramawi, welcome to the show. Thank you. I appreciate you having me and that uh, lovely introduction. So, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where did you go? Uh, where, where did you study as an undergraduate? And ultimately, how did you decide podiatry was the field that you wanted to pursue? Sure, sure. So uh, for the longest time, I always wanted to be actually an orthopedist surgeon. Uh, I was very active as a child. I played different sports and suffered numerous ankle sprains. So my idea was that I would pursue a field that could kind of mix both worlds, medicine and sports. And orthopedics provided that realm. Uh, the further I got into college, and you know, you do your pre-med classes and whatnot, uh, the road to become an orthopedic surgeon became very apparent to me. Uh, you know, you have to do your pre-med classes, take your MCAT, uh, get into medical school, which is all hard as is. And then after that, you have to take your step exams and match into an orthopedic residency. So it's not necessarily just because you got into medical school, you're going to get the residency of your choice. Uh, you have to score and have a certain type of resume for you to ha have that to happen. And then after that, it's a five-year residency. Uh, and then if you wanted to specialize in a certain body part, which I wanted to do the foot and ankle, uh, it was another one-year fellowship. So you're talking about a six-year process post-medical school. So come my junior year of college before my MCAT, my counselor actually told me about this uh, field of podiatry. Up until that point, I had no idea what podiatry was. I thought it was more of a chiropodist uh, field where they just took care of day-to-day -day things. The more homework I did, the more research I did on the subject and the topic, I was kind of amazed by what they do, especially surgically. So it just made sense for me at the time to kind of lessen the road uh, and pursue a field that would provide the same outcome for me, and that was podiatry. If I may ask, why do you think the colleges fail to inspire uh, these pre-med students to go into podiatry? Because as you mentioned, you didn't discover that you were interested in podiatry or even had heard of podiatry until your third year of uh, undergraduate. So what do you think needs to be done so that uh, pre-med students know that there are more options than just going the MD or DO route? Sure. You know, podiatry is a relatively small field. Uh, you know, now that I'm a practicing podiatrist, I'm amazed by how much everyone knows everyone, whether it be from here to California. It's an incredibly small field. And it's not the colleges more so that fail the students. I think the podiatry schools themselves, we have to do a better job of promoting ourselves. The problem is there's only nine podiatry schools across the nation, uh, and two of them are in California. So it's a tough job to get those podiatry schools to go all across the country and, and kind of uh, express our venue and be like, hey, you know, we're, we're out there. If, if this is something you're interested in, you could also pursue this route. Uh, but as far as the counselors, I think if you're a devoted counselor and you specialize in medical students or people pursuing DO, MD, DPM should be part of your list. So I'm assuming getting into a podiatry school is very competitive because there are very few schools out there. And Getting into an MD and DO school is becoming even tougher. So I'm assuming getting into a podiatry school nowadays is 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 quite the challenge. Yeah, you know, we have to do the same things as any MD or DO student would. Uh, I took my MCAT just like everyone else. You have to score a certain score. Uh, and depending on what your resume is, that'll get you through the door. So, you know, they weigh your GPA, your extracurriculars, your, your MCAT score. It's just like getting into med school or DO school. Uh, and yeah, just because there is nine schools, so if you want to be zoned into a state or a certain coast, uh, you may not be privileged to do that. So it's tough for me. I, I, I applied to three podiatry schools because realistically, that's all I was going to attend. But if I didn't get one of those three, it would have been a tough road for me. So essentially, when you're when you're applying for podiatry school, you need the same requirements as if you're applying to a medical school. 
Yeah, the same courses. All I believe it was eight classes before you took your MCATs or your pre-med classes. I don't remember exactly. Uh, I was a business major in college, so I specifically only took the pre-med requirements, and it, it's the same all around. Do you think doing research prior to applying to podiatry school is important? You have to. I mean, that's a career choice. I think doing research for any career is important, whether it be med field or not. Uh, this is a long road. It's a very long road. And if you don't do your homework and educate yourself properly, there are a lot of times during that road where you may question yourself or find something that you didn't know before. So, yeah, it's best if you're going to approach this, you approach this with the proper knowledge and research ahead of time. So why did you ultimately choose podiatry as the direction rather than going the MD route? Because you were interested in orthopedics. I, I understand you had an interest in focusing on the foot. Um, what was the, was there a mentor who said, you know what, you know, podiatry is maybe a better option for you? Yeah. My counselor would just introduce me to the field of podiatry. I took it upon myself to take the extra step and see if, uh, everything she said was, uh, factual. And it was, uh, the research they produced was, uh, very high up there. They were produced in foot and ankle journal and all the prestigious journals out there. Uh, the surgery they do is, you know, everything any orthopedic from the lower extremity can do, depending on what state you practice. Uh, podiatrists have privileges, privileges to do foot and ankle surgery, regardless of how uh, gruesome the injury may be. So for me, it was just the road to uh, begin working. That was the most important part for me. Uh, I just didn't have the time to sacrifice five years and then an extra year, the three years residency, and then a complete focus in the foot and ankle uh, just made sense to me. How would you distinguish podiatry from medicine? What's the difference? What, what's the big difference? Medicine uh, as in like – Going the MD route or the DO route, what, what is the difference between being a podiatrist and an MD DO? Well, the first two years are pretty much the same. The courses we take are, are exactly similar, uh, class for class. It's after those first two years you take what's known as a board exam. Uh, depending if you pass or not, you move on to the third year. Now, when you move to the third year, your focus is completely on the lower extremity, whereas as the MDDOs, they're still doing relatively the whole body. Uh, so that's the biggest difference. I mean, it's, it's right away where clinics are based, lower extremity based. Uh, the courses are now lower extremity based and uh, so forth. So that's that's the biggest difference. And during your third and fourth year, you're doing clinical rotations, I'm assuming. Yeah, third year, you're, you're doing both a mix of classes and clinic. Uh, so you do classes in the morning and then you go to clinic in the afternoons. Uh, and then fourth year, you're doing your externships, which is basically a month-long interview with each, each hospital that you hope to get a residency in. Uh, so yeah, third and fourth year is more hands-on and the courses are more geared to what you're going to be practicing later on. So could you run us through some of the specialties, the subspecialties that you can choose as a podiatrist once you complete medical school? Yeah. So podiatry has so many specialties. Uh, it's just not the foot and ankle. Uh, if you wanted to be surgically trained, uh, in reconstructive surgery, that's one aspect. If you wanted to be a traumatologist and do uh, ankle fractures, Achilles ruptures, ligaments, and so forth, you can do that. If you wanted to do purely dermatology, that's another sub -sub specialty. Uh, if you wanted to do wound care, that's a huge specialty. And depending which residency you go to, it'll kind of gear what your specialty will be later on. Uh, but there are a lot of different factors within podiatry. And uh, you know, as a podiatrist, you have to know uh, general specifics about everything. But sometimes you may not be equipped to treat everything. So, for instance, in, in my practice, uh, I can I kind of have a general idea of pediatric care. But in terms of going forward with treatment, I tend to refer out pediatric patients because that within itself is a special subspecialty. And you have to have a, a decent amount of knowledge to be able to treat that. So there's a lot of options in terms of what one can choose if they go the podiatry route. They don't necessarily have to do a surgical uh they don't have to do a surgical residency necessarily, and they can still focus on the foot. Well, so now it's mandated that every residency has surgery requirements. So you have to meet a certain number of surgeries in order to graduate. But uh, depending what residency you go to, it'll be geared to different things. So sometimes the residency is purely what we call elective cases, meaning bunions, uh, hammer toes, and so forth. Other residencies may be a high trauma program. Uh, another residency may be a high wound care program or high pediatric population. 
you have to have a minimal surgery requirement. That's just the way things are mandated now. But once you get out, you're free to practice how you want, really. So how did you decide what area of podiatry you wanted to practice? Was it really in your third and fourth year that you kind of narrowed it down? I know you had an interest going in, but how did you kind of narrow it down? Uh, to be honest, surgery was always my my thing. I, 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 that's what I always wanted to do. It's, it's a great mix of academia and hand and eye coordination. So I, I knew all along I had to do surgery. Now, depending what kind of surgery, that kind of was uh, in the hospital setting. Basically, uh, seeing surgeries and what they're about, whether they be elective trauma or reconstructive, uh, that kind of gauged my interest into what modality I want to pursue. Okay, so you apply to residency. I'm assuming that process is very competitive in terms of picking the the locations that you want to go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when I was applying for residencies, there was a residency shortage, so there wasn't enough spots for as many graduates that were graduating. Oh, wow. Uh, so that, yeah, that caused a bit of a panic. And then if you want to pursue a top residency, the competition's even tenfold after that. So you have to gear the area you want to practice in and then uh, give one hell of a month of, during your externship to really impress. So, yeah, residencies is very competitive. If you thought getting into school was competitive, I think residency is even more competitive. So is it even more important when you are in podiatry school to do research during your your years in, in the school? It's tough, you know, because when you're a student, you're very impressionable, right? So you want to do everything. You want to make sure your grades are great. You want to make sure your resume is great, meaning you did the extracurriculars, you joined the student body, you did the research, you did the volunteering. And you want to give yourself the best shot to land a residency. Uh, when you're a resident or when you're an attending now and you're kind of evaluating students, you weigh things a little differently. You know, uh, the things that were important as a student may not be as important when you're an attending. Uh, for me, the, the thing that weighed a lot, I don't I want to say the most depending on who you are, but uh, was your actual externship. That month you spent with the hospital rotating, getting to know the attendings, the residents, and how you kind of meshed in with the group. Uh, that was a huge factor, and that could kind of make up for something you may lack, such as a GPA or your extracurriculars or research. But as a student, you know, my advice would obviously to be do everything. <laughs> you that's, don't want to leave. No, but up. that's good guidance. You're essentially saying that those externships are vitally important and, and take them seriously. Really be prepared when you show up um, and get there early. Uh, because that really demonstrates that you want to be there, and that can make the difference between whether they pay attention to your grades or not, essentially, is what you're saying. Yeah, not only that, but even the externships you're not interested in, you should take them seriously, because especially in podiatry, it's a small world. So even though you had your first four externships and you were great and star-studded, and you know what, the last one, you just did it as a rest externship, you really don't care for it. That impression you left on them may go a long way. You know, the directors talk, residents talk, so you have to be careful. You kind of have to be on your A game at all times. So where did you do your residency? So I started my residency in Decatur, Georgia, at a place known as the Podiatry Institute. I did my first year of training there, and then I finished my residency in Jefferson Health in Philadelphia. Uh, it's a traumatology program, so I finished my next two years there. So is it typically a are typically the podiatry residencies three years? Yeah, it's three or four years, depending on where you go. Okay, and is it recommended that you do a fellowship post residency? Is that is that a normal pathway, or do people usually come out after the residency and they're ready to practice? It depends. You know, some people really like the fellowship idea. Uh, that was a big thing for me, whether I wanted to do a fellowship or not. Uh, I think it's it's multifactorial. So if you feel like you're trained enough and you had all the necessary experience, uh, maybe fellowship may take you back a year. But if you feel like you still want to brush brush up on your craft, fellowship just seems to make sense. If you want to focus on a specific specialty, yeah, fellowship makes sense. Uh, there are different reasons why you should pursue a fellowship. Uh, for the practice I wanted to establish, um, it just made sense that I would just start right away. And are there different options when you come out of your residency to either do outpatient, inpatient, or a mix? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the job hunt after residency is also very competitive. <laughs> Nothing comes easy in this world. Um, so, so it's so it's always competitive. It never ends. I'm sorry, you you completely. I, cut I off said I guy. said I said it never ends. 
No, it, re it really doesn't end. You know, uh, every step of the way, you think it gets a little bit better. You know, once I finish being a student, things will get better. Then you're like, you know what, once I finish being a resident, things will get better. And now I'm just like, you know, once I retire, things will get better. I don't know. <laughs> but um, as far as out of residency, it's the job hunt is tough and you kind of have to make a decision what you want to pursue. You can pursue private practice, where it's just a, a small uh, practice type setting, one-on-one uh, -on -one patient care. You can pursue uh, in-hospital service, which you're an attending at a hospital doing rounds and so forth. Uh, you could pursue uh, multi-specialty groups where, you know, it's a huge group and they're basically filtering all the podiatry patients to you. Uh, you could pursue an orthopedic group. Basically, they're an orthopedic group that needs a foot and ankle specialist, so they're going to send anything related to the foot and ankle to you. It all depends what you want to do. Um, sometimes you don't have a choice what you, you can pursue, especially if you're zoned into a different area. So it, it becomes a challenge once you graduate residency in terms of getting the job you want uh, and where you want it. Do you think the field is equally balanced with women women and men? I think so. I, th I think my class was a 50-50 split. If not, it was a, a little more women than men. Um, yeah, I, I, I think so. So what do you love about podiatry? Uh, it's different. Every day is different. Um, every patient is different. Every pathology is different. And you kind of have to have a knowledge about everything. If a patient comes in with anything related to the foot and ankle, they expect you to know it, right? Because you're the expert. It would be tough for a patient to come in and be saying, you know, I have no idea. Um, you have to have some sense of what's going on, at least enough to refer them to the proper place. Uh, you know, if a patient comes in with an infection on that day, you, you put on your infectious disease hat and you have to play the role of infectious disease doctor. If a patient comes in with a uh, surgical pathology, you have to put on your hat and you have to be a surgeon that day. Uh, when you take x-rays, you have to be a radiologist every day, right? Reading the x-rays properly. So it, it keeps you busy. Um, for someone who whose attention is kind of everywhere, uh, I like the variety of different things that I see every day. And that's what seems most exciting, that there's a lot, every day is different in terms of the types of patients you interact with and the procedures you get to do. So it keeps the day interesting as you progress in your career. Absolutely. I mean, things will obviously repeat themselves. Uh, the pathologies you see will repeat themselves. That's just every medical specialty. You know, an internal medicine doc will see the certain same things all the time. Uh, podiatry is the same way. We see a, a lot of repetition in pathology. But it, it's it's rarely uniform. Uh, every everything is going to present differently. So yeah, it, it keeps you on your toes for sure. What advice would you give to a pre med student interested in podiatry? Um, what advice would you give to them in terms of uh, giving them the confidence that they can ultimately pursue you know the the subspecialty or the specialty that they that they that they desire? Oh, I mean, any anything with hard work will get you there. Um, believe, you know, if, if you really want to pursue a field like podiatry, I would suggest you shadow people, you know, do your homework on it beforehand. Uh, don't just shadow one person and think that's the impression, whether you like it or not. Uh, you may go to one podiatrist and say, wow, this is the greatest job ever and just pursue it. I, I would urge you shadow multiple people, uh, do your homework and research. And once you make the decision, I mean, it's up to you. It's in your hands whether you get accepted or not. Again, uh, it's going to take a lot of time and sacrifice to get to through these hurdles, whether it be podiatry, DO, and MD, and you have to be willing to do that. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Rimawi. Uh, this was such a pleasure. I think you really inspired future podiatry students, and uh, thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you for having me, and if anybody has any questions, they're more than welcome.